friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm so happy you're here. We have a really exciting, fun episode today. I'm excited to share some recipes with you, some tried and true recipes that I've been making for a while now, all about apples. My husband and I visited an orchard yesterday. It was so much fun. This gentleman has been, I don't know how long he's owned it, but he's in his 70s and him and his wife bought it and they have been running it for years. The guy is really interesting to talk to. He's really passionate about the environment. That's why him and his wife started with organic farming. The great thing is you can get organic apples just like this. This is a honey crisp for 75 cents a pound. That is like unheard of. These are processing apples, so they have little scars, but there's nothing wrong with them other than cosmetic. They are so beautiful, perfect for what we're gonna make today. And they don't have any sprays. So even if you get organic fruit from the stores, I know someone who works in a packing house and says that they bleach their fruit, even if it's organic. So going to a local farm and shopping organic and buying organic and in season when you can, is definitely the best way to live and the best way to stay healthy. If you haven't checked it out already, check out my free guide. I've linked it down below for how to stay healthy this winter and how to cure a cold fast naturally. Today, we're gonna to be making some recipes that have some sugar in them, but I use unrefined sugar. So normally for this recipe, the first one we're making, which is apple butter, I'm so excited to share it with you. I use honey or maple syrup, but it's so dang expensive, especially organic. So I'm using unrefined cane sugar. I get it from Azure Standard. It is fantastic. It doesn't have any of the nasties in it no glyphosate or anything like that. So we're gonna be making apple butter. And then with the apple butter, we're gonna be making some apple butter pie bars. They are absolutely delicious and so easy to make. They're gluten-free. I love making them. They're so easy to make, few ingredients and perfect with apple butter. And then tonight, we're gonna to be making one of my favorite recipes with apple butter as well. So it's pork with apples smeared in apple butter and fried sage. It is so delicious, the perfect fall meal. It's absolutely my favorite fall meal. I make it almost every fall. And this morning I made, look, I've been playing with scoring this beautiful sourdough bread. So really excited to put some apple butter on the sourdough bread. Really fun recipes today. I have a lot to do, so let's start peeling some apples. Look at this apple, it is almost perfect. 75 cents a pound for apples with no spray, no bleach. Beautiful organic apples. This apple butter recipe is a combination of Jeff's stepmom, Sherry. Uh, we love cooking in the kitchen together. And normally we do this together, but we didn't do that this year. And also, I like to add some cardamom. And then as a guideline, I use the canning Bible. So it's the ball canning cookbook and has so many recipes and guidelines in there for canning. So we will be canning up this apple butter. I'm doubling the recipe here. So I have about 12 pounds of apples. One recipe is about six pounds of unpeeled apples. So I weigh the apples before. I had to look that up because it is very confusing in the ball cookbook. And then I'm just putting them in the cold water there to try to keep them from getting too brown. It doesn't really matter. It's just I don't like them too mushy and brown when I'm working with them. I have used an apple peeler and core in the past. However, that thing is so hard to keep clean and it gets moldy and gross no matter how much I try to take it apart and clean it. So I have found that this is just the easiest, best way to do this. You can do it super fast. Okay, yay, that project is done. We got the apples peeled and cored and chopped. Now we're just gonna add some liquid. So I have some organic apple cider here, the zest of one of these lemons. My neighbor gave me this fabulous juicer. It's so nice. Two lemons juiced here, medium high heat. 
and we're gonna let that come to a boil and then we're gonna simmer it for about 30 minutes and let the apples get nice and soft. And then you can either transfer them to a food processor or blender. I'm just gonna use our immersion blender because it's much easier, it keeps it all in one pot. And then we'll add our spices and we'll add some vanilla and we'll also add all the sugar. And that's it. And then we let it cook down and we have apple butter. So cool. All right, it's looking a lot like applesauce now, <laughs> which is perfect, but we're gonna boil it down even more and make it into an apple butter. So we need to add our sugar. I have four cups of that sugar measured out. Such good sugar. And then all of our spices. So I love using fresh nutmeg here. So I have about a half a teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg because I'm doubling the recipe. I have four teaspoons of cinnamon and then two teaspoons of clove and allspice, a little bit of salt. And I also have some cardamom in here. The recipe will be linked below, so I'll let you know everything that's in here and all the exact measurements. And then we're gonna add a couple teaspoons of vanilla. Again, Azure Standard, I just love this company. They're so good and the prices are so affordable. Bring it to medium high here and we're just gonna stir that. And now we just gotta let it boil down. We want to get it to a nice thick consistency. Beautiful. Looks like it's done. We're just gonna do the spoon test here. So basically you just put the back of a spoon in the apple butter and then draw a line. And if the line stays, then it's done. Yay. So now that we have our apple butter done, it's so good. Yum, I love all the spices. Jeff came out and he's like, it smells like the holidays in here because <laughs> it really does. Now we're gonna make a fun treat with it. We're gonna make apple butter pie bars. So they're super easy to make, they're gluten-free. I've made them a ton. We're just gonna start with some of that cane sugar, that unrefined cane sugar from Azure Standard that I love. We're gonna do everything in grams, it's just a lot easier. So we need 125 grams of sugar. Make sure to zero your scale here. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of cinnamon to this sugar. Make it extra special, about a fourth of a teaspoon. And I love this Ceylon cinnamon. It's so good for you. It has a lot of medicinal properties like balancing your blood sugar and a lot of other things. So this is really good. I get that for measure too. And then some freshly grated nutmeg. And then I just like to take my fingers and get it all incorporated in there. Oh, it smells so good. Then we're gonna add two whole sticks of butter, which is what this is. This is a uh, cultured butter, which means it has the probiotics in there as well. So it's so good for you. We're just gonna add the whole thing in there. Now we're gonna add 280 grams of the Kosovo flour. Sometimes I add just a couple more grams in there as well. There we go and a half a teaspoon of salt. I love using the Redmond's Real Salt. You wanna use fine salt here. Although you can use coarse, it just incorporates better with the fine. Back to the KitchenAid. You wanna make sure to mix this on low speed, slow, until you see those crumbs, because we're gonna do a crumb topping. That's perfect. I like to hand mix this as well. Make sure you get everything on the bottom and all the excess flour but make sure to leave some of those crumbs in there for the crumb topping. I like to use the butter wrapper to butter the corners and everything else. <laughs> make sure it's nice and butter. We're gonna have parchment paper too, so I especially want the corners. Very handy to use the butter wrapper. So we have our parchment lined baking pan and then I'm just gonna add some of that crumb topping here. This is gonna be the bottom of our shortbread crust. Usually add about 408 grams of this, and then I save the rest for the crumb topping. There we go. And then we're just gonna flatten it out here. Make sure to press it into the pan. Sometimes I use the back of a measuring spoon too to make sure it's nice and pressed. Thank you. 
And now we get to add in our apple butter. We are gonna add in about two cups I have measured here of the apple butter. Okay, if there's some chunks left in it, as you can see, <laughs> some of the apples. You could use applesauce here as well. I haven't tried it. It might be a little too thin to use the applesauce and you'd wanna add some extra spices to make it really nice and yummy. Now we're just gonna slice some apple for the apple filling. And then you just wanna make sure the slices are really thin. We're gonna add some fun spices to this as well. I'm doing about a half of a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice I mixed up. A little drizzle of maple syrup, splash of vanilla, and a little bit more cassava flour to hold everything together. Soak up those juices. I like to use my hands. It coats the apples well, just easier. Your best tool of the kitchen. <laughs> So now we gotta make it pretty. Layer on the apples here. And I've also done this with pear butter and pears when we had fresh pears. So many different things that you can do. I've made this recipe with raspberries and using raspberry jam. I've made it with blackberries. Just a really versatile, delicious recipe that nobody knows is gluten-free. Beautiful. So now we're gonna add the crumb topping over the top. Break it up a little bit so there's not huge chunks, but it doesn't have to be perfect. This goes into the oven now for about 35 to 40 minutes at 350 degrees, and then we'll have a beautiful dessert. It's been a long day in the kitchen, but a fun day. I love days like this, that we just get to play in the kitchen and eat delicious food. So one more meal to make, but I can't go any further without trying this delicious bread with some apple butter. I'm so excited. That apple butter is so delicious. All those spices, all those flavors, it is so good. It just tastes like fall. I'm good on so many things, you can put it on yogurt and toast and desserts, ice cream. <laughs> but right now we're actually gonna put it on some pork chops. Pork chops and applesauce is obviously something most of us have had growing up. This is an elevated pork chop and applesauce. It has apple butter, fresh sage, garlic. It's so delicious, it comes together so fast. So let's whip it up real fast. Mm. I buy these local pork chops. They are so good. It's so good if you can find local pork that you know has been grass fed. They're absolutely delicious. So first, I'm just gonna cut some delicata squash here. This will be our side instead of potatoes, although mashed potatoes are absolutely delicious with this. Delicata squash is so great because you can eat the skin. It's super fast to cook, especially. You cut them pretty thin. Great side for a weeknight dinner. Scrape out the center. You can save the seeds if you want. These ones will go to the chickens. <laughs> They'll love them. I have the oven preheating right now to 425 Fahrenheit. Chop them like this. So pretty. Olive oil, Redmond sea salt, so good. Some fresh pepper. And then I'm just gonna add some of the herbs here. Nothing fancy. It's right off the stem. Look how pretty that fresh thyme is from the garden. And then I'm just gonna add some fresh sage leaves here. Mix that all together. Spread it out so they get nice and roasted and cook even. There we go. And these will roast while we get the pork going. Okay, we have our beautiful pork chops here. Then I'm just gonna add some salt, pepper, and a little bit more olive oil. I did heat up my pan to medium high, so we're getting that nice and hot with the cast iron pan. And these guys are just gonna go right down in the pan. These inside first. 
wash my hands, so I'm going to do the other side here. You want to season them pretty darn well. Pepper. And we're going to let those sear for a few minutes on each side. In the meantime, we're going to chop some garlic. We're going to mince this garlic and put it with the apple butter on top of the pork chops. That looks good. You want to mince it pretty fine so it doesn't burn on top of the pork chops. Let's check on those pork chops. I love that sound of searing. Oh, they're looking beautiful. That one looks good. Move the heat around a little bit. Let them cook for just a little bit longer. While that cooks, we'll slice the apple. More apples, can't get enough. <laughs> These apples you wanna slice very thin. Watch your fingers, telling that to myself. Beautiful. While they sear for a minute on that side, I turn the heat down. We'll go ahead and add everything to our pork chops here. First, I'm gonna start with the apple butter. My goodness, yum. Then I'm gonna add the garlic. Pre-mixing this might have been a good idea, but that's okay. Just mix it all together here. And whatever drips in the pan is just going to be a delicious sauce. Then we're gonna add our apples. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that heat off because we're gonna continue to cook that in the oven and I don't want the other side to get too seared. And you can just stack them like that. How cute is that? And tuck them away. Careful, hot. Beautiful, and then all I do is I just add the fresh thyme on top. You can definitely de-stem it if you want, but I keep this very simple and rustic, so it's great for a weeknight meal. It looks absolutely beautiful for company, but so easy. And then we'll add some of that fresh sage. Oh my gosh. Doesn't this meal just scream fall? Oh. So pretty. And I'm just gonna add some more olive oil on top to try to prevent the herbs from browning and put some on the apples. More flavor. These beautiful pork chops are gonna go in the oven with a delicata squash and you wanna cook the pork chops till the internal temperature reaches 165, just like chicken. And we'll have ourselves a beautiful dinner. There you go. Whoa. That is amazing. I'm gonna have two stomachs. Right, you wanna say grace? Yeah. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the money that you provided for us to be able to eat. We thank you for this food. Thank you for all the great work all you should put into making it. Ask that you help those attain food who do not have any. Ask that you bless us this evening. And we thank you for this food. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Love you. Mm. Okay. That's good. Are we going in? Mm-hmm. It's good. It's spicy, but it's sweet. Oh, feels like fall. <laughs> Perfect fall meal. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we'll sign off there. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for spending the day in the kitchen with me. I pray that you learned something and had fun. I certainly did. So if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment. I would love to hear your comments. For now, have a great evening. Take care, everybody. <laughs>